Thanks. I want to say also say thanks to everyone for uh, for coming out tonight. Um, my name is Steve. I live in Arlington, and I first became interested in zoning for uh, there were really two reasons. Uh, first is I'm a town meeting member. You know, one of the things town meeting does is take up zoning articles, and I, I always thought they were kind of interesting. Uh, the second comes from being a homeowner who had to navigate the building permit process. I just thought it was a lot more cumbersome and a lot more challenging than uh, either I expected it to be or I felt that it needed to be. So in 2016, I got myself on a working group, a town working group, to recodify our zoning bylaws. So this was mostly an editorial cleanup. Our zoning bylaw was written in 1975, and it's been edited hundreds and hundreds of times over the last 44 years, and it just really needed some cleaning up. So along the way, I learned uh, a bit about the history of Arlington zoning. I learned a little bit how our paper wall got built, and I want to share some of those stories just because I think they illustrate some of the challenges we face. And you know, it's also I think it's also interesting to just understand how things end up working out, um, how they work out. So once upon a time, Arlington, built, Arlington actually built a lot of multifamily housing, uh, mostly in the form of apartments. And we even, we even have our own pejorative you know, kind of uh, inexpensive housing, like Dorchester. The weed of Dorchester was a triple-decker, so Arlington has the Arlington pillbox. These were you know, basically inexpensive, but you know, kind of nondescript garden apartments that you know, people didn't like back in the 50s and 60s when we were building them. So in 1975, or, or, or rather, our 1975 zoning rewrite was kind of, um, kind of a revolt against you know, the apartments that had been constructed over years previously. Uh, it started in 1973 with a two-year moratorium on apartment construction. And between 1973 and 1975, uh, we put a lot of limits on new housing construction and multifamily housing and construction in particular. I, I think that's kind of consistent with your findings. So we're, you know, we're in that boat too. So I think the number of apartments buildings constructed in Arlington is probably one of the best illustrations of you know, what we did with our zoning back in the 70s. So in the past 44 years, since 1976, we've built five apartment buildings with nine or more units. So in the 44 years before we rewrote the zoning, we built 53 of them. For four to eight unit apartments, the smaller ones, we haven't built one of those since 1976. So we've built one since rezoning, re rezoning the town. Uh, it was a sixplex. In the 44 years before that, we built 22 of them. Uh, trip three units, we've built three since 1976. Uh, in the 44 years before that, we built 15 of them. So I mean, this is a pretty stark difference in just in terms of you know, what the municipality produced. Our 1975 recodification also involved what I would call um, a certain amount of dimensional and density shenanigans. And there's one in particular that, I mean, it's just a real zinger, it's just bad. So I want to share that one with you. <laughs> so Arlington allows townhouses on a number of residential districts, and these generally require a 20,000 square foot lot, so about half, half an acre. Now there's an exception to this. We have one district in town where the limit for a townhouse is 30,000 square feet. And ironically, we call this the townhouse district. So the funny thing about the townhouse district is the largest lot there is 26,000 feet. So we have 26,000 foot is the biggest lot, the limit's 30, so we have, a town, we have a district called the townhouse district where you cannot build a townhouse. <laughs> now, how did we end up here? Well, back in the 70s, we had, there was one resident, you know, it's, it's always that one person, with one resident who was really opposed to having townhouses on a particular street that happened to be in what was going to be the townhouse district. So he lobbied hard and hard for, uh, he wanted 40, a 40,000 square foot lot limit. And, because, and he chose 40,000 square feet because he had looked at all the parcels and said, well, if you pair this one up, it's not 40,000. If you pair these two up, it's not 40,000. He just went through the whole street and said, okay, if it's 40,000, there's no way anyone can build an, uh, a townhouse on this street. They already compromised and they gave him 30,000. And we haven't built any townhouses on that, uh, on that street or in that district. So when you look at zoning laws, this is, this is the kind of thing you have to pay attention to. I mean, they just, the numbers look kind of innocent, but you know, they're not always so innocent. Uh, the effects of this, the way this affects us today, I mean, the Metro Boston area has produced a lot more jobs in housing. People are moving into the area. We have a bit of a housing shortage and it's driving prices up. Arlington's housing costs are predominantly land driven. So as of 2019, our, or, our 2019 uh, assessments, 
a buildable single two or three family lot. The median price for a median price for a single two or three family lot is four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that's not the building; that's just you know the the chunk of land. I mean, anything that we could do to uh, ameliorate this, I think, would make a big would make a significant difference. Because if your lot is four hundred fifty thousand dollars and you put a single family home on it, that's one household that pays the four hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you put a two-family on it, well, now you're you're splitting it two ways, so two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a piece. If you were to put three, well, then you're down to one hundred fifty thousand each. And when you go from four fifty to one fifty, that's 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 a that's a that's a big significant difference. Going forward, I you know Arlington and Medford are in very different situations. Where um, Medford, I think, you know, was residents really recognizing uh, the pro the problems with the shortage of housing and trying to. You know, convince uh, your city leaders to you know come along and take up the cause. In Arlington, we have a, a town manager and a planning department that have been keenly aware of this these problems. And you know, our challenge is probably more to convince residents and, and town meeting. Now, we tried to you know we brought a, a suite of articles at our last town meeting to basically further mixed use and multifamily residential. And to a large extent, not completely, but I think to a large extent, what they really did was took the down zoning of the 1970s and just you know, rolled it back a little bit. So the buildings that were made non-conforming by 1970s era down zoning would just be conforming again. Um, this you know, turned into a, a, fairly, you know, a fairly polarized debate and the ARB wound up withdrawing the articles at the last minute. But um, you know, th that's not the, it's not the end of the story. Uh, last Monday, our town manager uh, gave a presentation to our select board. You know, he's been working with on, you know, basically on the regional needs for housing, you know, the, the regional shortages of production and his involvement with the Metropolitan Mayor's Coalition's regional, you know, housing task force. Uh, the select for board also recognizes that this is a problem and I believe they're planning to, you know, in the future collaborate with the ARB and find some ways that you know we can go about addressing it. I think it, this is going to be a good op opportunity, but um, you know we've got a lot of work to do. Thank you.